as it just tear gas and and cops driving this tank at the other end of the crowd um you know, and that uh, uh, you know um and uh, to sort of culminate it all there was um the police then turned up to this media center and um systematically beat the living daylights out of everyone they found there um and then the sort of press followed up with a, a bunch of stories about how um oh, just like picking out individuals and 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 smearing them um I mean, it looked seriously heavy volleys, wasn't it? I mean, people might have been killed, people were being carted out off to hospital. And well, and, like and, 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 and then people, you know, and it was quite hard afterwards. It was very hard sort of keeping up on it. There was um, uh, lots of people who had gone to Genoa um, from various cities. Uh, you know, they, these guys, you know, people who were like squatters who were sort of loosely affiliated with a, with uh, political groups would went to Genoa and then never came home again, especially in it. A lot of Italians, were, you know, the, the, you know, people went missing. And it wouldn't be, um, I don't think, too far-fetched to suggest that, you know, the Italian police were... So that must have been seriously scary. You must have been scared. Yeah, it was sort of scary. It was... Um, I mean, here, you know, roughly, apart what's going to happen. What's going to happen if you've got police like that out of control in a sort of political way that you just think, I could die here and no one will know. But there were a lot of people on the streets, yes, maybe, yeah. I mean, there were some sort of crazy things. I mean, uh, but on the flip side of that, uh, there were some quite inspiring things as well. I saw, um, uh, you know, I mean, in that you go to March in London, you see Palestinian flags, but there were Palestinian flags in Genoa worn by Palestinians <laughs> who would appear from street corners and belt petrol bombs into police cars and stuff. And yeah, there was... Um, you know, there was various factions from Greece and uh, Catalonia and, and whatnot. Maybe, and, you know, I guess maybe that was our opportunity or before Jen was our, was our opportunity to, to, to have some sort of communication or, mm. or something to bring it all together and to be more coherent with it. And that didn't happen. I'm really, do you think that the, the violence of the police there was, you know, the death was such a shock to people that played a role in sort of ending that movement that people thought, you know... No, no, to be honest, I don't don't get that impression. Um, I think maybe the the reality is probably just a little more disappointing than that, that, you know, maybe people are just sort of thrown so much energy mm. into something that then and they didn't know where to go next with it i think the problem was as well then the the um anti-war movement then sort of you know the, the whole sort of um anti-capitalist movement then sort of almost unseen turned into this anti-war um mm. this anti-war movement which was which was had you know massive um uh left-wing groups being very influential in it and um, I think maybe some of the more ad hoc or the individ- a lot of the individuals who had been involved up until then because it, it was quite easy to plug into into mm. to, um, an anti-capitalist movement then sort of got, got elbowed out and then there was the great big marches which was almost like the death knell for, yeah. uh, for any kind of protest movement. Well, had you gone to Genoa with the idea of making a film, a fourth in the film, or had you just gone to participate? Mm, yeah, no, we didn't, we didn't. I didn't even take a camera to Genoa, um, which, you know, in itself... I mean, we sort of, when we got there, there were sort of interesting things. I guess, you know, part of my thing with um, um, activist filmmaking has always been, I think, you really need to have a really good idea what you're doing before you pull a camera out of your bag. Uh, you know, apart from anything else, and you're you're quite a menace if you're pointing a camera at people mm. who are doing things that you know they could get in a lot of trouble for. Then you, one, you need to be really quite sure what you're why you're doing it, and there needs to be a good reason um, for what you're doing it for. And um, you also need to be completely prepared to hold on to those tapes at any cost. Yeah. Um, and I guess when we got to Genoa, we were less. We didn't really just want to redo anything that we'd done in the past, and we sort of discussed various ideas. What would we really like to do there? What could we do if we were doing some filmmaking? And then, in the end, we just sort of really got stuck into um, what was going on there, really. And let's let's move swiftly on your, your filmmaking career. Now we had um, Phil Ruffin here um, a couple of weeks ago talking about the siege of Sydney Street, and I think you've made a short. <laughs> Um, documentary about the Tottenham outrage, the, the robbery of uh, 
the, the rubber factory in Tottenham in 1909. Can you tell us a bit That's about that? That's right, yeah. Well, um, funnily enough, next year in January, it's going to be the centenary since um, um, since this action happened. I guess, and I, I mean, I'm presuming Phil Ruff spoke a lot yeah, about he, Sydney Street, yeah. and this, this was, um, a, it's just such a great story um, about a, a couple of young La- Latvian lads who... Um, carry out this ridiculously audacious robbery right outside Tottenham Police Station and then go on a, 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 a two-hour rampage through free London boroughs chased by a, a mob of a, a, like a hundred concerned citizens and policemen firing old Boer War rifles at them and a football team join a chase and they hijack a tram and the cops... And a party of duck shooters. Yeah, and the duck party. shooters get stuck in and it's just this really terrific story. Um and uh, yeah, so I made a sort of short documentary that because um, uh, it's just a story worth telling, isn't it? And um, and I've just finished that recently, so hopefully um, we'll uh, we'll launch that possibly in January to coincide with the centenary, and uh, and maybe we could get some of our latest Eastern European comrades to uh, reenact. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> The Do outrage. The bank, I, mean, yeah, I get your meaning, comrade. Yeah. And is that is that? I mean, you still make it, got ideas for more films, or are you sort of abandoned the filmmaking? I've not abandoned the filmmaking, in as much as uh, I guess you know. Uh, I mean, uh, with anything like um, writing or, or filmmaking, it's or you you can walk away from it lots of times and go, actually, I just want to be a bloody carpenter. Um, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the stories are still there. I guess I've, I've you know, in the past uh, couple of years, I've made some some um, short films, and um, at the minute I'm writing a, a feature script, which uh, which is, yeah, still, um, a, you know, an, an on, over, overtly <laughs> propaganda film. Well, I guess, well, uh, it's <laughs> like a... Well, how would I pitch it to you, Ian? It's like a shit-kicking story about... Um, a vibrant and valiant young uh, uh, Asian anarcho chick, and how uh, the collective uh, activity of the group is much more than some of its parts. It's like a, you know, it's an anti-state propaganda right, film, right. and there's plenty of um, of, uh, of uh, anti-state violence to keep even the most jaded, cynophobic class warrior happy. 